about several different aspects of it. Um, one of the first things I want to talk about is the North Star or Polaris. Now, we have a angle on our planet at all times. And so, the planet has this angle and it's rotating always to the east, tumbling. Now the North Star is situated, so right on our axis, we're always faced towards the North Star. It's so far away, that it seems like we're always facing at it perfectly. Actually, we have a wobble. We actually wobble a little bit. It's like every 12,000 years, I think it is. Um, it moves, and the North Star isn't perfectly lined up with North. So it changes a little bit. Anyways, that's why the North Star never moves in the sky. It's the only star that doesn't move in the sky, and it's lined up with our axis. That's why, because we're spinning all the time. Everything else is moving because of it. But that's right on our, like, you know, our, our like rod going right our, through. Uh, how far away is Polaris? You know what I mean? You know? I don't know. It's, far it's away. crazy how far away it is and that it lines up with our axis perfectly. Yeah, it really is. Thank like, God for that. Of, of, yeah. of the infinite number of points that our axis lines up to in Actually, the entire universe, there's that one point. Polaris. Yeah, but no, if you, if you look back in the, in the records, um, there was another star that was known to be the North Star, but it, but it wasn't Polaris because there's another star near it. And with the wobble, it, we were lined up with that one. Huh. I don't recall the name of it, but huh. I 100% know it existed. All right, so that's why that doesn't work. Um, that doesn't move, and all the others do. And that's why this works, rather. So here's Polaris in the sky. All the other stars appear to be moving. If you do a time lapse with the camera, they like melt. They just keep moving. It's a big like, circle. All the stars are sitting still, and because because we're moving, like this, to the east. While well, while we're doing that, it appears that they're doing this because that's the same thing. So look at they're moving, not us, because we're standing on this. We don't realize. So they're doing this, but we're the one moving, not those stars. Technically, each one of those stars is moving through its galaxy, doing everything that it's doing, its solar system, etc., just like we are. But it's such a small, you know, amount of uh, variable within the whole thing that we. It's like you know we don't see stars move, you know. Not in our lifetime, for sure. All right, so that's why LURD works. Now, what is LURD? L-U-R-D. That's left, up, right, and down. Now, that is based on this. Left, up, up <laughs> right, and down. It goes kind of clockwise, I'm sorry, it goes clockwise, rather. And that also matches north, east, south, west. L U R D. They perfectly line up. So if you are looking at a star, and what you do is, we do this at my, my first class, you make a Y stick, you got a star. Take another stick, and you sit down to get nice and low to go to look up. And you, you sit sight the, it. You sit on the ground. Yeah, we usually put a blanket or something down the mat, whatever. And you just sit there and stare at it. Half hour later, that thing's not going to be in the same spot anymore. It's going to be like, say, over here now. <coughs> and it'll move up like two inches from where it was. And that's up there now, and then you'll have to get lower to make it a sight. Right, and you're like, dude, that thing moved two inches. So if it moved two inches, you're, you're staring at east. Because up and east are this side of the stars moving. That's north. Now, why does that work, though? Which is the most important part, dude? All this mathematical jargon is irrelevant if you don't have an understanding of what's going on. So let's talk about that real quick. Because to me, that's more important. And once I crack this, I spent three years, I think it was, 
thinking about this virtually constantly trying to figure it out. No books talked about it, nothing. And finally, I cracked it. This is why. If I'm standing on the equator, north is here, south is down here, I'm facing east, right? I'm going down, and the whole time after I get past my, my apex, I'm moving down like this as I'm going around, right? But this star I'm looking at appears to be going up. There it goes. So I'm going around the planet as it goes, right? Because I'm going like this. Same thing with west, the opposite way. I'm looking at a star, right? And instead of going, instead of going up, it's going to go down. So now here I am looking at this, and I'm going, I'm going around the curve of the planet like this, and it's like, oh, I can't see it anymore. It went down below my horizon. It's going down, right? Because you're you're turning towards the east, and if you're looking north. It should go left. You're on your you're you're on the equator, looking north. Is east. Is west. And I'm doing this. Whoa! Right. I'm going this way. Well, if I'm looking at this, it's like, oh man, look at it. It's going really far left. Cause now I'm looking here. It's over here now. I'm moving, not it. But it looks like it's going left. Same thing with south and right. The exact opposite way. That's why LERD works. It's our rotation. That's all it is. So. If you look at a star and it moves, you know what direction you're looking at. L-U-R-D, clockwise, around the cardinal directions. North, east, south, west, L-U-R-D. So if it's yeah. up and left, that's northeast? Well, that's when we get to now, exactly. So now, say it moved, say you waited 15 minutes, whatever, moved like one inch up, right? Well, say you uh, waited a half hour, <coughs> whatever it is, and it's here. It's not up. But it's up and left, and they're equal. They're equal. Well, if they're equal, then you're equally north because you went left, left and because you went up, you're equally east. So if that's the case, <clears throat> then you're looking at northeast. Which is the best direction. Absolutely. Absolutely the best direction. <laughs> looking northeast. Says any and that goes with yeah. any of them, right? <laughs> so if I was looking, I don't know, southwest, I'd have to move down to the right. So here I'm spotting the star. Ends up here. Right there. And now what's interesting is that it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, balanced, and all of that. If that's the case, say it went... It was here. And it went, let's see, left one inch and up, not one, not, not one inch to be equal, but two inches. It's up here. <coughs> so it went double the distance up that it did left. That means I'm leaning towards east. So I'm actually right here now. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's still northeast, but I'm, you know, shying towards east. Well, this is why it matters. What we can do is this now. We can start shooting azimuths from stars. Because if you have a cardinal direction, compass like that, we're looking at north, east, south, west, which is L. Sorry. U R D, which is zero three hundred sixty, right? Ninety, hundred eighty, two hundred seventy on my compass. It's all there. I just haven't wrote numbers. So now, if I see a star, <coughs> and I'm looking at it. And if it goes up only, I'm looking at a 90 degree azimuth. Stop putting numbers to it. It's not like, I'm leaning towards this. No, dude, what's the number? Oh, 52 degrees, bro. Bam! From a star. Thank you. This is how you do it. That's 90 degrees. So, just like I did before, if it goes equally up and equally left, I'm looking at northeast, which is actually a... Five degree azimuth. I can
can I can make bearings off of stars now. Now things are starting to get a little more interesting, right? And so half of 45 is like 22.5. We'll just say it's 22. That's me leaning towards the north. Okay, for that to happen is what we already said. I have to look at this. It has to go, we'll say, two inches. We started here. Two inches up and one inch to the left. So it'll be here. Two and one. So I'm leaning towards the left. Oh, that'd be, that'd be the opposite, right? <coughs> so if my star was here, I'd go left two inches and up one inch in the sky. So now I'm, doing, I'm looking at a 22 degree azimuth. You can figure out every single number you could possibly get on a compass by looking at stars. And so what we do in my first class is everybody takes turns looking at a star. And what we do is we stand behind them and we shoot an asthma to that star, right? A little man in the box. Okay, that's 22 degrees or whatever it is. You know, 45 plus 22 is 67 degrees. So I'm looking at it, you know, 67 degrees. And so I already know what it really is. And so, and he's looking at um, a star and I already know what it is. My buddy knows what it is. We don't say anything, put the compasses away. Now we work on ours. He comes around, he spots us, he, he knows what it is. Somebody else does the same thing. Two, two eyes on it. After a half hour, I'm like, all right, bro, what asthma's are we looking at? You know, you never look on a compass on your own. You know, I've had people be like, 53 degrees, how close am I? I'm like, dude, 52 degrees. Like, you just shot an azimuth down to a single degree with a star flying in the sky right now, out on that field, that turn of pond. It's totally doable, it's totally easy, it's totally, totally repeatable, and it makes sense. So it matches getting... up with the rotation of the Earth, matches up with the cardinal directions and the numbers we all know, 9, 18, 27, 36. I mean, if you know you're looking east, you know you're looking at a 90 degree azimuth. I mean, really, it's, there's, there's no magic to it. We don't know this. Well, if I'm looking at a star, <laughs> there it is. So, celestial navigation. You can just look at a star and get a, a broad sense of what where you're looking. Yeah. Or you can sh you, you can make it a, a shooting an azimuth and you actually know the exact number just by knowing your compass. The reason why it works is because our rotation and the north star is matched up at all times. That's why everything works together. You can get the lured directions, <laughs> right? Oh. That's why you can start getting that stuff because it all kind of starts that's making sense. Now, oh. one more thing we need to talk about is, is uh, Using groups of stars, not a single one. You have to know your magnetic deformation in the area, you know? Yeah. This would be the last thing. So now, if we're looking at Polaris, the North Star, it's not the brightest star. Some people make that mistake. The brightest stars aren't stars. It's not the brightest star. The brightest stars aren't stars. Uh, I think it's like uh, the sun. Canis. Well, no, it's like the, the dog star. The brightest star can be Mars and Venus too, depending on like the oh, time of, course, of the year. Of course, you know? of course. Um, okay, so now, how do I find Polaris? If I just want to find Polaris, there's a whole another thing we can do. Well. Oh yeah. There's a constellation called Ursa Major. Big Bear. Big he's Iron Dipper. Tough. The Big Dipper, man. And so, if you follow these outside ones, he points to Polaris. If you follow the outside of what? The ladle? The front of the lip there. Yeah, the lip of the, of the pot. Whoop. There it is. It's super easy to do. Nice clear night, you can see it. You just follow it up. Like, oh, there it and is. And they have it's another one. Tonight, they, yeah, they have another it. one for the Southern awesome. Hemisphere, too. Yeah, that's Southern it's, Cross. I don't remember the else. Southern Cross. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's more to it than this, though. You see the Southern Cross for the going. first time. If you happen to be able to see Ursa Minor, Little Bear, Little Dipper, it's actually Polaris. 
the last one on its handle. And it's something like... Oh, Polaris, like Polaris is the last... The last one. Star. That's Polaris right here. On the handle the of the small dipper. Oh, the handle. Dipper. Yeah. Yep. Versa Minor. That's it. Versa Minor. And what it does is it creates a curve. If you follow that curve, it'll point you right to the handle of Versa Major. Usually this is much more, um, a much dimmer. It's much, I've only seen this really clear a couple times. It's not easy to see. You have to be in Maine, um, Canada. Yeah. Uh, it has to be real clean. There's a lot of light pollution in our area. Now there's another one. On roughly the opposite side of the Big Dipper, over here, it's actually slightly off. There's one that looks something like this. It's called Cassiopeia. Now if you line up... Called <coughs> who? Cassiopeia. If you, if you take this um, and realize that it kind of makes a perpendicular line right there. You can make a line and that one cuts across to 90 degrees. It could be like a triangle like this, right? <coughs> Basically, to me, it's like a bow and arrow. So you have this here, have that there. And so you look <coughs> at those two and you just go almost straight out of this one from those. And it leads right to Polaris. Oh